Welcome to another sparkling edition of Plank of the Week. We have been so inundated with planks this week that we've had to have a special pre-meeting meeting to work out how we can thin it down uh, to a minimum of 20. And we're not even sure if that's going to be uh, uh, not too few for us to do. Uh, Dawn Neeson is here with me, Kevin O'Sullivan as well. Welcome, both of you. Um, it's been quite a week for plankery. I mean, every week we meet up and we think, it can't possibly get any worse. You've been slagged off all week for your stance on Anne Boleyn. Um, I still stand by that stance. You may still stand by it. Oh, wokey, 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 wokey. But I think as a result of that, we should give her the opportunity to, uh, to sort of repair her reputation. Uh, and give I don't us need to. My reputation's well, firmly do. intact. Thank Indeed. you very much, you gentlemen. Absolutely okay. Do. Well, we're not going to revisit any of that. But what we are going to do is ask you for your first nomination, please, Ms. Neeson. First nomination as a huge football fan is the six English teams that want to join the European Super League. Well, all of them. If you've been hiding under a rock all week, um, and I don't blame you, it's been one of those weeks, uh, this is the preposition to form a breakaway European Super League, which is all about money and nothing to do with football. All about the money? What, you mean nothing like the Premier League then? Well, I mean, no, look, actually two wrongs... Mike's a big fan of the Super League. Two, yeah, I, know, I love the Super I know. League. Bring two, it on, two wrongs, that's what I say. Two wrongs don't make a right. Look, I fully accept that football isn't like the days when I started going as a kid, where you kicked off at three o'clock on a Saturday, yeah. you walked to the ground... Corinthians. I mean, I've been, to, uh, I've been to I've been to Upton Park, uh, right, and I've been to the new West Ham Stadium. I can tell you which one I like better. And you don't need a pair of binoculars when you're at Upton Park to watch the game. Well, exactly. So don't tell me that you know somehow football has lost its way and somehow it people has, it have has lost you know its people you, have somehow been bewitched by have, money. No, you have lost me, the point me of the whole passion. This is about football fans. I don't know a single football fan. I'm even feeling sorry for Spurs fans because. If my club had done this, I would just we'll be appalled. It is like totally... Yeah, but the only point. reason they haven't done it is because nobody asked them. Because no, they would have done if they'd been asked. Uh, well, I don't know. Other clubs, in, you know. other clubs in the Premiership have been asked and they have said no. And I think two of the, at least two of these clubs were a bit... A bit Who was asked and said no? Southampton. <laughs> Who was asked and said no? I couldn't possibly comment. No, you don't know that, do you? I don't know. I do know, know, know of one club. Oh, well, say, say no, it. Is. Why no, can't no, you no, say? No, no, why not? No, because I'm sworn to secrecy. No. Why? No. What kind of a journalist are you? Because there's no I'm, bigger club. I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist, I'm there's journalist no that big, gives exclusive There's no, no. All right, well, there's no bigger club in the Premier League than those six. I can't imagine anybody would have been approached before those six. Tottenham. Big yeah, club. Tottenham's a big yeah. club. Well, they think they're a big they've been club. around. They on, they've they've they're got a great a history. So was it West Ham though? It I'm wasn't not West Ham. saying who what do you mean it was. You're not saying but it's supposed to be a journalist. No, I'm not. Yeah, and that's yeah, why I'm giving the story to my secrets. newspaper. J journalists don't keep secrets. Okay. They reveal well, don't worry. This is too exclusive to the newspaper. Well, you can give it. You'll notice in the Daily Star. Missing the point. This is You can give it to your newspaper later, and we will be coming out tomorrow, so you'll be fine. Right. This is selling out fans. Big time. Well, I mean, you're selling out this show by not really yeah, exactly. what this club is. <laughs> it's the last time you, where is your last, loyalty? Last time we asked where her. Where is your on. loyalty? It's the last time we asked her on. That's yeah. true. It's to my newspaper. But no, this is selling out fans. Big oh, time. Not to us then. And for the first time, I, I think in my entire life, I agree with Gary Neville, who did a brilliant rant on Sky. Oh yeah, Gary Neville, the millionaire, who also that, runs look, hotels, who owns his own football team, no um, one... and apparently says, "Oh, I've done quite well out of football." Yeah. Really? Well, fair enough. Look, no one's arguing that well, there is... doesn't undermine his argument that he's quite oh, well it, off, does it? No, well, exactly. it means that money has been in football for a very long time and he's taken plenty... Yeah, he's, he's, he's taken... Right he's taken... Right it's about money. He's taken plenty of advantage of the money that was available from Manchester United. Yeah, of course right? he has. Yeah. And yeah. When, when Manchester United were taking... So how is this any different? Because well, they're going to go into a competition that's got no competition. This, yeah, exactly. It's got plenty of competition. It just doesn't have relegation. You and I have been through this already, so we don't want to rehearse the same thing. Oh, yeah, we don't, we don't need to here. rehearse so all the is, same arguments. This is 12 clubs that are just going to be playing a pointless game for plastic fans. No one wins, no one loses. It's just endless money making. And I mean, no one's going to give a damn about it. it either. No, exactly. And they're saying, oh, we're saving football. No, you're not. You're destroying the grassroots of football in this country. No, you're not. Yes, you are. How Mike. many kids? All right. How many people playing in the lowest league in, of our money football filters league? Money down. How many? How many of those kids that play? For say Forest Green Rovers, how many of them are going to make it into the Champions well, League? I don't know because they haven't done None it yet. Of them. But, but they might. But they, they will come through the ranks. Right, you're missing the point. But they could. 
Yeah, they well, could I could, exactly. I could play the Champions they League as well. It, it's not very likely. Ha- and it does happen. It does happen. What you're happen. talking about here is a closed shop. So those kids who dream of making the Champions yeah, exactly. League cannot make this no. the European Super League, and therein lies the philosophical problem with this new league. Exactly. It's just wrong. It's, it's just not it's wrong according to sport. According sport, to you, it's wrong. To, and according to her, it's well, wrong. Well, sport oh. has to have jeopardy. It has to have jeopardy. It does have do jeopardy. Do you win? Do you no, fail? Do you get relegated? It doesn't. There's no jeopardy if you can't get relegated. You can play sport without having to win or lose, oh, right? No, shut up, you You can play sport. Right on, man. You know, yeah, right on. I can, yeah. I can take you to the nearest. Absolutely. I can take you to Will the nearest. Nobody can, wins, can, You We're guys, I mean, you guys you have lost the plot. I can, I can take you to the yeah, nearest. Very, very left-wing can, stance there, I can there, take you. No, it's no not com- left-wing at all. Yes, it was. No, it isn't. No competition. No, not at all. And the awards are woke. Goes to Mike Graham this week. No, not at all. The point is, the point is, is that there are plenty of games that you can play that don't have to have a cup at the end of them. That don't yeah. that don't have to kick you out of, of anything that you're in. You can play golf. Well, I like you can the play fact. Oh God, you Jeopardy. Jeopardy. golf. Jeopardy. Oh, no, oh. Golf, golf is a cut. No, it's you can cut. play. You can play golf. Right at yeah, any level. Professional golf. Oh, oh, I'm talking about any level of golf. Well, you, you can can't. Play. You if you were a young golfer hoping to make it onto the professional circuit, if you had something like the Super League, you couldn't make it into that. Yes, That's and they the point. and guess what? They do That's it in the golf point. as well. Don't tell me they it's do not it about in golf. winning. It's about they, winning, they losing, do it. or getting relegated. They, no, they do it in golf. You, you don't, don't even know this. You've got to be worried about no. uh, getting relegated or have the ambition to win. You don't get relegated out of the golf game, do you? You play golf, and if you're good enough, you get relegated out of the football league. Yeah, but. We're talking about sport here. You said well, the football that is sport a sport. is about oh competition. Is a sport. I think these people you don't are. get it. Do you know do what? You? I think these two have run their course on plank of the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you two are going to get relegated from plank of the week. You yeah, carry well, on I was, like this. I was urged There's plenty to, of, to plenty, of other, plenty of other people I could get in. Which yeah. is exactly yeah. which is exactly how the super league's yeah. going to operate, isn't it? You don't mind it it's here though, do you? Club. These we are the same two people who say to me every week. Oh, I think it's better with just us two and nobody else. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to teach you a lesson. You're relegated next week. We're going to bring somebody else in. Jeopardy. See how you like that, Jeopardy. 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 <laughs> no one, no one is relegated from this. That's the point. There is now. No, no, no that one doesn't is matter. Relegated from this Nobody's league. relegated. All right, let me put this to you. Let me put this to you, Dawn. In your ignorance, you have forgotten that very successful franchise football in America is played without relegation. Oh, it's there is no relegation from the no NFL. No, what no is the biggest? All right, what is the biggest no one single? What is the biggest single annual sporting event in America, by numbers in, no, around the world? Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. For America. The Super Bowl. No one gives a monkey's ass. No, over the about Super Bowl that. is the biggest sporting we occasion care on television. About our football. We're not talking about West Ham. We're talking, We're talking about, about international. Football. We're talking yeah. about football. Well, I'm in sorry, general. Dawn. That football. We're talking about football the is best not. Sport. Excuse me. Football is not owned by Britain. Okay. You can bang on about how Britain invented it if you want. We invented but it. I'm afraid. We're not good at it, but I'm we afraid it. there is no market anymore in Europe, as far as these these, these companies are concerned, because they are companies. They're not just football clubs. As far as they're concerned, they need a bigger market. And there's a bigger market in China. There's a bigger market in Indonesia and Malaysia. There's a bigger market in America. And that's what they're going for. So rip the heart out of the British game of football. It's unfortunately inevitable. You might as well stand. I mean, talk about being lefties. You might as well stand on the coal mine at the (sighs) tip and go, don't shut the coal mines. We want to keep them open. What are you, Margaret Thatcher? But you're quite right, Mike. It shouldn't be about winning and losing. No. It's just participating. No, it's pa- Absolutely. Everybody's a Very winner. Good point. Everybody's a winner. No, what I meant to say was yeah, that yeah, you yeah. can have you can have a draw in football. You don't have to be relegated all the time. You don't have well, you to do. win or lose. You do. Most of you do. Sorry, the bulk of teams... Do. Look, I know you're used to being relegated because you're a Fulham fan. Yeah, the point <laughs> is this. The point is this, right? Most clubs <laughs> in the Premier hobby. League... Most clubs in the Premier League do not get relegated. Most clubs in the Premier League stay in the Premier League. Only a few go bouncing backwards and forwards all the time. The top six clubs that they've been nominated for this Super League will never be relegated yeah, well, from the Premier League. Kick them out of the Premiership. And you tell me kick them out of the Premiership. Well, tell me then, then the Premiership hang on, become interesting. Tell me yeah. then that that is fair. No, it wouldn't. It'd be boring. Yeah, that no, was no, worse. Nobody no. cares which of the you're six not, teams well, no, with wrong. a load of foreign you're money wrong. win. Nobody cares. No, you're wrong. It's boring. You're wrong. I'm sick to death of watching no, Man City wrong. play Liverpool you're wrong. and pretending to give a damn. I don't. No, it's just a question of who's got the more foreign The problem with you two, If you kick them out, the Premiership for the first time in 20 years will be interesting. Part of the fact that you two may Maniacs have turned this into a sort of a grunge and cringe fest because you'll shout at each other all day, right? We're supposed to be having, a reasoned, having a reasoned conversation, <laughs> right? The point is that England and Manchester United are no longer on an island 
They are worldwide and world brands, and so they have the right to sell those brands to other places. They don't have the right and that's to what they want to do. And that's what they're going to do. It's just a rubbish thing to I do. I didn't yeah. see you complaining when they got listed on the American Stock Exchange. I didn't well, see no, you no, complaining no, no, when they started charging 90 no quid one's for saying a football they kit. they can't do this. It's, of course they can do it. They can do it, and they are doing it by the sound. Why does it make them planks then? Well, because, because, because it's, because it's shows, disappointing. Because it's wrong. No, no, you're the one. Yeah, but world, it shouldn't be world. about winning. Don't you try us on a hippie ticket. No. You're the hippie. There's only two hippies <laughs> it's here. It's about winning It's you old lefties. It's you old lefties. It's about taking part. <laughs> it's you old lefties yeah, that are standing. You, you, you're standing you on, on the edge We've of the flat earth there, society. No, you you you've got nobody. You've, you're flat earthers. You don't understand progress. You don't understand money. You don't understand the future. What you are is Luddites. No, we, yeah, well, so yes, you well, quite. You're Luddites. What's wrong with that? Get back in the championship and shut up. <laughs> well, that much I know. Yeah, there you that go. Much why, don't, why don't you give us your first plank? Because we've had enough of that rubbish. My first plank is, uh, I think I'm going to go for the uh, police chief of Merseyside, who is uh, retiring. Thank God for that. <laughs> the Merseyside police have been in it before. Uh, well, yeah, but you, do you remember, uh, about, I think it was about two, three weeks ago, we, we had Merseyside Police um, as one of our planks. Yes. Uh, because a bunch of officers had a big stand in the middle of a local <laughs> square saying okay. it, is a, it is an offence to be offensive. Yes. Uh, and it had to be pointed out to them and the Merseyside Police had to apologise for this because actually it's not an offence no. to be offensive. So they got that so wrong. they don't even know the law. Who was it that instructed these officers to go down and do that? It was the Chief Constable of Merseyside, a guy called Andy Cook. Yeah. He uh, doesn't believe uh, that criminals, that b even violent criminals, uh, and rapists are inherently bad people. Oh, really? And uh, he'd rather pump billions of pounds into cutting poverty <laughs> than upholding the law. He doesn't seem he, to realise that says, actually it's not his money. Yeah, but he says that uh, if you gave him a five billion pound budget to cut crime, he would only spend one billion of that on cutting crime right. and would spend four billion tackling I mean, poverty. It's like, hey, cookie. Boy, it's not your job to tackle poverty. Your job is to tackle crime. And, and these, criminals. And these ludicrous woke police chiefs are wrecking policing mm. in this country. Yeah. When, when did this become an issue? Because it seems like every police force yeah. now is run It's all about by... social justice. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Why the can't problem, they just I mean, go and catch crime? We had the report today, didn't we, from HM Inspectorate of Constabulary, that basically the police had given up arresting people. Yeah. Because it's too complicated. It's too complicated. Uh, because, you know, the pandemic and everything. Uh, yeah. So uh, we're not going to bother arresting you no. unless, of course, you're breaking the coronavirus rules. Unless you're sitting in a church. In which case, yeah, or perhaps walking in a field with mm -hmm. a cup of coffee next yep. to somebody else. Mm -hmm. By the way, I've got some other news for uh, old cookie boy. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of think a rapist, a convicted rapist, isn't an inherently bad person. Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, a murderer, probably yeah, an inherently probably. bad person. Yeah. You know, I just misunderstood. They're not bad people. I know, they just made a mistake. But it's, it's, a, but it's also the pro profligacy that they talk about the money yeah, as well. Yeah. I mean, it's not his money. Yeah. Where does he think that's coming yeah. from? And by the way, if you cured poverty in this country, crime, Andy, would still happen. What? Yes. It wouldn't solve anything. You so, know. well done. You've signalled your own immense virtue mm. and talked an absolute load of rubbish. Why is he saying this, Kev? Because he's an idiot. No, this is he, fair. Well, to arms, it isn't it? It's because he's retiring, he's just retiring. like that bloke Andy Marsh. What sort of retirement in... speech is that for a cop? I know. Yeah, well, well, don't forget this guy Andy Marsh. Another, he's the Bristol one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Bristol. He's the one who um, uh, uh, allowed his officers to take the knee to BLM demonstrators mm. as they destroyed public property and threw that statue into the sea. Uh, and one year later, he's standing there bemused because his city, Bristol, is consumed and people are setting fire by to violent police riots. Bands. Well, I'll tell you why, Andy, it's because you sent the message that it's okay to break the mm. law. So these woke police chiefs are wrecking policing yeah. in this country. Also, it's pretty insulting, isn't it, to make out that poverty is the cause of crime, yeah. as if everybody who's poor yeah, is a criminal. No, well, because there the are plenty side, of people, there There's are plenty of people who live lives without very much money yeah. who don't turn to crime. Yeah, in fact, quite. they work very hard to yeah. make sure that they, they not only raise their children to be good people, but that they don't go anywhere near crime. No, it's, it's a really insulting. Sort of patronising of the workers' yeah. classes. It is patronising, you're right. And what sort of new police chief does Liverpool need? One who prioritises above and beyond anything else 
fighting crime and upholding the law. Yeah. And doesn't worry about whether or not there's a lot of poor people around. And actually Ridiculous. remembers that the thing the police are supposed to do is to protect the other people from the criminals. Yeah. You're not supposed to help the criminals, yeah. you know, to somehow get more free stuff. But helping yeah. them understand yeah. their feelings yeah. and their right. emotions. So Cookie Boy has been in the wrong job yes. his entire career, the woke His idiot. goose is cooked. <laughs> He's a real he plank of the year. Let's hope he year. doesn't turn up anywhere else, though, because some of these characters that retire uh, early, uh, I'm you sorry. know, find, them, find their way onto, mm. like, crime well, no, he ha he or has. He is has. He has. He is turning up somewhere else. He's going to be... Uh, Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary and Inspector of Fire and Rescue oh, Authorities in England. He's going to be in charge of that. That's the so, outfit that's so just come out. So he's going to take his moronic well, mm. idiocy on well, the Well, that's, that's, the, that's the outfit that's just come out with the news that the police don't arrest anyone anymore. So presumably he'll go in there and go, great job, guys. Yeah. Just Sounds stop, like a perfect you know, fit. Just don't bother arresting yeah. anyone. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll get some more free money and give it to the criminals. Yeah, and set up a few mm. more food Meanwhile, banks. Meanwhile, how, crime it, how is crime in his area? Well, it's soaring, of course. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Unbelievable, isn't it? Just ridiculous. Well, listen, thank you for that. I'm going to go, I have to, uh, for the first nomination of my uh, collection of three, Sir Keir Starmer. Yay! I'm Yay. I mean, well, just week. take it now. As just, I was watching, just go. <laughs> as I was watching yesterday afternoon with increasing incredulity, first his encounter with um, uh, the man from the Raven pub, Rod Humphreys, outside, who was being perfectly reasonable, uh, who was holding a piece of paper. Uh, there seemed to be a woman in the background saying, there's a car behind you. I don't quite know what she was doing there. Um, there was a couple of other minders, big looking guys. This guy's going, you know, you've let me down. I've been a Labour voter all my life. You know, you've done nothing to stop this lockdown. It's been absolutely ridiculous. He, re he revealed, destroyed, our pub, destroyed our pub. He revealed from the data that he had in his hand from the, uh, from the Office of National Statistics, official figures that the average age of the people dying was over the age of 82. You know, Starmer clearly was nonplussed by this, but, you know, he could have responded in so many different ways. It was quite calm at that point. There was no ranting going on. Uh, instead, however, of, of listening to him and, and having a proper conversation with him, he basically said, I don't need to be lectured at. By the, the by by your by your kind or something like I, that I, by the, by the I, likes, of, by you. The likes of you. Just an appalling. And I just thought to myself, what is wrong with and you? And with no evidence whatsoever mm. labelled well, him. Well, hang on. COVID we'll get denied. to that. We'll get yeah. to that because then the next frame, yeah. uh, you see one of his burly minders trying mm -hmm. to prevent um, Rod from getting into his own pub because they thought he was some kind of mm. maniac on the outside of mm. the pub. Plenty of people are asking the question, what was Keir, Keir Starmer doing in the pub anyway, since you're not meant to be inside pubs? And it also didn't appear to be a pub unless it's got a big garden in the back with any space outside. I, I, no, I, I think it's got chairs outside at the front. Maybe. I mean, it's neither here Maybe. nor there. He was going into the but pub. But the point is, is that, you know, on. so that was bad enough. Then, as Kevin says, he goes out and starts addressing the assembled press and starts off by saying that, you know, I profoundly disagreed with his point of view. Then moved on to the fact that he thought that more or less the guy was a COVID denier. Well, the, yeah, and he said, rather mysteriously and sinisterly, I thought, um, I'm not even sure if he believes that COVID exists. Yeah, I think Ryan Humphrey should sue. I think he yeah, should. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm calling him should. a COVID denier, yeah. a conspiracy theorist. It's a conspiracy theorist, theorist, theorist There's no isn't suggestion it? whatsoever that he's any of those things. How dare Keir Starmer do this? This is what the left do. Yeah. They, if you don't agree with them, they demonise mm. you. They label you as a dangerous yeah. extremist. Yeah. Just like Chairman it, Mao yeah. did. Just like Lock you up uh, in Hitler a, yeah. did. Re education Just like Stalin did. It's right. like what they did with Brexit. If you don't agree, you're a racist. I mean, it's just like... Like it's like it's doing down again. He's, it was he's the, the leader of the Labour Party. He should, he should teach well, himself is, not to re, uh, re, reduce himself to that kind yeah. of level. Yeah. No, also, if you're a politician, it's really bad. I mean, I, I have some sympathy for politicians who sometimes get um, you know abused by people in the street because they don't like them because of what they've been going through. But in this case, this is a guy who runs a business whose mm. business has yeah, been absolutely. badly affected by you policy that Keir Starmer has voted yeah. for. Of course you can. Yeah, absolutely. And there was no reason to suggest that he was dangerous no. or in any way no. a threat. He was simply trying to make a point. And if you're willing to go out on front uh, on the doorstep and start seeing voters, I'm afraid that's what you're going to have to put up with. Well, this is the and the point. idea that you don't want to put up with no. it shows what an absolute snowflake you are. The worst part of it for me was well, I don't need a lecture from you. Yeah. I mean, patronising condescending, yeah. which is why Labour with that attitude are finished. They're just not listening. Mm. That wasn't a lecture. That was listening oh, by to the way, a by voter. By the way, it doesn't need, need a lecture from the likes of you because my wife works for the NHS. And, yes. As that? a lawyer. As a lawyer. Does he mention <laughs> that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, as, as a, a lawyer. Receptionist taking well, more yeah. free money from the public sector by the way but, if but he then even compounded it further right by putting out a statement 
saying, this is my statement following uh, the encounter I had in a pub this afternoon. Almost sort of tongue in cheek. Put a link in um, to the to the to the government website, which has yeah, all yeah, the I figures know. on death. I followed right? that through. Then he goes to a pub in Camden. Yeah. You know the People's Republic of, uh, where he sits down outside this pub called the Prince Albert, which was recognised by plenty of people, where he has a full glass of beer as if he's never touched it. Yeah. And the two people he's sitting with have got half yeah. a glass of beer. It was just as if they've been drinking it for a while. Just that. What would you like to drink here? A pint of photo prop. A pint of yeah, photo quite, prop. Yes. Uh, <laughs> in fact, in, it might have been one of those ones yeah. you can buy in the shops, in which actually yeah, isn't real. Yeah, yeah. You know. And then he's like. Better late than never, as if he's making fun of it. Oh, I see. The, the, the whole I thing, the whole thing with the pub land rod. He's a lifelong Labour voter. Mm. So you know, it's not electric not the rest here. Of his life. It's, no, it's no, you it's listening not to a voter, and if you don't listen to the voters, and to be fair you're to him, screwed. he was interviewed, and he said, "Look, I would have said the same to Boris Johnson." Of course. So it's not party political. I, I fear that Keir Starmer is like so many people of the left that they genuinely believe that if you question the efficacy of lockdowns, which we've all been doing throughout the lockdowns, and there's every reason to do it, that's all we're doing. Mm. Was lockdown the best way to tackle COVID? Yeah. They genuinely think you're a COVID denier. Mm. Yeah. There's no such thing as COVID. No. You know, for, as we discussed no, earlier, in my, in my case, it'd be very difficult for me to be a COVID denier. I had it for three weeks. Mm. And, you know, It's ridiculous to call people who are skeptical about lockdowns deniers of COVID, mm. but it's what the left do. They demonize mm. you. Mm. They turn you into a far left left extremist it's, it's, weirdo. It's, it's, it's outrageous. It's, it's the Golden Brown bigoted woman moment, it is. isn't it? All it over is the again. same thing. It's the patronising, condescending yeah. left who should be in touch yeah. with the working yeah. class voters and you have know, no idea. And you idea. know what these people do? The same as all these pundits on the telly, these lefty pundits. Uh, you're, never, you're never of the right, far right. Oh, it's far right. Oh, it's far Anyone right, yeah. Vote, sorry, it's far right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a careful yeah. process of oh, yeah. demonisation. Oh, they know, they know the, the words they're using. Ad infinitum mm. forever. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly right. Your second one, Dawn? My second one. Should we shout out ice cream? Should we be a bit cream? less contentious, Yeah, perhaps? should we shout out ice cream? I don't we've, know. We've shouted at several... I'm not a big fan of ice cream. <laughs> Me neither, to be honest with you. We've shouted at several food items at this year, haven't we? From butter to cheese to God knows what. In any case, let's, have it. let's bring in another dairy product. Let's have a go at ice cream. Or more specifically, Ben and Jerry. Ben and Jerry. Now, they've got previous They've been this. on this before, yeah. They have been on this before. Now, remember, these people make ice cream. They. Very expensive ice cream. Yes. So it's not particularly healthy. Now, you can get healthy ice cream, but theirs is absolutely disastrous. Theirs is pretty disastrous. creamy ice cream, anyway. isn't it? <laughs> so, anyway, this is, this is, they tweeted this week right in the middle of the appalling murder of Dante Wright in America, um, shot by a policewoman who mistook her gun for a taser. That's yeah. not what this is about. Ben and Jerry capitalised on this mm. awful tragic event by tweeting um, this is rooted in white supremacy and results from the international criminalising of black and, black and brown communities the system can't be reformed defund the police for God's Again. sake free tub of Rocky Road for yeah. every they, George Floyd supporter yeah well they did yeah, they did this they did this over the ridiculous they, these they mad did this over people the whole George they Floyd did. thing last year and what's they, it got they to do with white supremacy Defunding the police again, I know, Mike, it is just, um, it's just mad. I mean, they sell ice cream. And they are owned now by Unilever, right. by the way. Right, white company. supremacy at Unilever, I Well, if you check out the board of directors at Unilever, mm. um, there is one, one black person mm. on that. Right. Um, and the rest of them are pretty much hideously white. Hideously white. Hideously white. Your words, not mine. As, Ben's, as Ben and Jerry would say, <laughs> yeah. hideously <laughs> white. But now they're yours. Yeah, hideously white. Um, and so, and, and not only are the board of directors that own Ben and Jerry um, hideously white, I do like that phrase, because mm. it's so wrong, you have to apologise for that yes. now. Um, they also sell a skin lightening cream yes. across Asia. Yeah, of course they do. Because it's obviously, you know, they're all in favour. Because it's all about the money. It, the yeah, day, yeah, the black and brown communities are important, right. yeah. unless you'd like What's whiter it skin. What's that stuff? It will make you hideously white. Yes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. In, in which case, sort of like, you know, black and brown skin, uh, unless you'd rather be whiter, in which case, here's our lovely project. Yes. And, <laughs> and they changed it, they changed it recently to, um, what did they call it? They called it a white something or other, and now it's glow. Oh, it's glow. Yeah, it's so glow. you can still get it. You can still get it. It's just yeah. a different thing. Well, I it's seem like, to remember as well the last time we did Ben and Jerry's. World. I might as well rehash what we talked about back then. There was some kind of uh, lawsuit filed by um, Im illegal immigrants who felt that they had been used as slaves by Ben and Jerry uh, in one of their factories in Vermont. Yes. Because that's where they yes. make their ice cream. Yes. And they basically yeah. um, were paying these people such low wages that they were below the minimum wage yeah. of any third world country where yeah. they might have come from. Yeah. Many of them had come from Mexico. And they were using quite happily these poor people 
uh, putting them up in houses where they were sleeping sort of tens of a room and only working at I Ben and Jerry's. I, I mean, just, it's such hypocrisy. Two, two scoops of virtue signaling, oh, yeah. please. I mean, yeah, I know. quite. Just incredible. I mean, the other thing they've done, obviously, because it's just not about racism, this is also about our. Um, um, sexism and mm. transphobia and ages and every other ism and obic. Um, they also banned Australian customers um, from ordering two scoops of the same ice cream in protest against gay marriage laws. What? This is in Australia. I... They stopped Australian <laughs> customers from having, say, like a is that gonna make? strawberry and a chocolate because they well, were so supporting one. gay marriage. Well, so only one or the you other. You have to be un go hungry to support what gay if you go? What if you go out and come back in again? Can you get another one? Well, yeah, I'm, 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 how quickly? I'm, I'm not making these results. How scoops are different, I'm not making you get two results. scoops of the same. Right? Uh, no, you Could couldn't you get have two, two scoops of the same. They had to no. be different. They had to be oh, different. I see. You couldn't get two scoops of the no, same. No, no, no. You, had to get two. you were banned from ordering two scoops of the same. Well, I see because that. that I've won the you, argument. That was you making a statement the yeah, against I'm gay convinced. marriage. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. What a gesture. I'm convinced. What a gesture. Yeah. Hang on a minute, though. Aren't there 100 genders? Yeah, 107. So uh, they need to open up a bigger shop yeah, yeah. and have 107 well, different. I, I, I'm you have to have 107 scoops. Yeah, yeah. well, exactly. What flavour would you like? Well, Neutroid, please. Well, I, I'm actually, I'm actually <laughs> deeply offended, Ben and Jerry's, because you've also got an ice cream called Blondie Brownie. That Blondie doesn't Brownie. sound right. How can you get away with that? Blondie Brownie. Obviously, Blondie. As Brownie. a blonde, obviously natural blonde, I'm deeply appalled <laughs> by <laughs> that. Sure. Also, also, it is, it also, it is um, ridiculously kind of colourist, isn't it? Yeah, because absolutely. it's got two colours in there, yeah, and there are other yeah. colours available. Yeah, so yeah. surely you'd have to put all but the colours. Jerry's has emerged as one of these companies, isn't it? That, that every time there's a woke row going mm. on, what, what? they're going to crop up yes. and get in their virtual signalling. But moment. they sell ice cream. I tell you, we should all Just boycott Ben yeah. and Jerry's. Well, I never buy it anyway. Oh, chocolate fudge Funnily brownie. Funnily enough, chocolate fudge brownie. There's one to conjure with. Funnily enough, I tell you what. The last time, thank you. Sorry about this. You all lower the tone, isn't it, with <laughs> the well, like. chocolate fudge brownie? Caramel sutra? No, thank you. Um, <laughs> It's too cold. Um, <laughs> the thing about uh, Ben and Jerry's, I think the last time this happened and they got caught up in one of these rows, people who were not woke oh, were actually woke. going into... What are you doing? A caramel <laughs> choo choo, it's really good. Ah, is that the one you like? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I used to... I, I, is it Cherry Garcia? Is that one of theirs? Yeah, Cherry <laughs> Garcia. No, no, I haven't found that. Was not a since he died. It's a bit. Well, <laughs> it's a a heroin bit. overdose. <laughs> I've got a funny story about him, but I'll, for another time. Um, <laughs> But no, um, there was there were people going into shops who were against Ben and Jerry's, and each time they went into a shop, they took um, a carton of Ben and Jerry's out of the freezer and just put it on a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not suggesting anybody should do that. No. Obviously, that would be wrong. No. But apparently, it became a thing. But, but you give me an idea. It became a thing. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, because ben, ben and Jerry's would be fine with that because they want to defund the police, so there's no one there to arrest you for doing anything wrong. That's good, actually. Boom, boom. So how about we defund Ben and Jerry's and stop buying? Defund Ben and Jerry's. Boys, much boys, better I idea. found the perfect one for you here, right? Go on. Fairway to heaven. There you go. See, perfect for golfers. So we don't really, I don't really play golf anymore. You know, I used to, but we can talk about it some he more if you'd like. He just talks about it. Yeah, He's I talk a good about player, Mike. He's a very good be, golfer. I used to be a good golfer. He's a very good. Kevin wasn't bad either. Actually, in his day, should we tell her about the the round we had at the Manga? No, I know you wouldn't like. No, I've heard all about your whole team. Shot you on the fourth. Very nice drive. Very good. Absolutely thrilled it through. Kevin, who's your second one? Well, I'm always slightly reticent about these stories of organised. Reticent. There's never a word anyone would use. No, I use reticent quite a lot. With him? No, no, no. I'm reticent about getting involved in these stories of of silly organisations being ridiculously woke. If yes. you pick up the Daily Telegraph or the Sunday oh, Telegraph, brilliant. any day of the week, the list there's of literally them. five pages of organisations that have done stu something stupid uh, to try to be woke and therefore appease themselves mm. to, uh, you know, to stop funding hate and all that rubbish. Uh, but this one really does take the biscuit. Mm. Uh, the Jane Austen Museum has launched a BLM-inspired interrogation of the author's love for drinking tea and wearing cotton uh, <laughs> due to the slave trade links Dear of God. those two products. She has sugar uh, in her tea, which makes it even yeah, worse. Sugar, she, has, she liked to drink sugar in her tea. Tea in those days was linked to the uh, slave trade. Uh, and she wore cotton dresses. Cotton, of course, yes. was linked to cotton picking, slave trade. And her father... But weren't uh, most, wasn't most of the cotton made in the mills in Lancashire? Well... 
I mean, I presume it was picked though mm. in the Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. Don't grow it in Lancashire. That's the point. Don't I? No. Yeah. See, I'm not much. I'm no, no, no. They picked it in the Caribbean things. and then it came over oh, okay. to be right. processed. You say so. Uh, but anyway, so. I think my this, shirt's made of cotton. Yeah, but is that you know. <gasps> racist! Sorry. Racist. <laughs> so, this is the Jane Austen Museum, which is down in Hampshire in Chawton, where she used to live, where mm. she worked Pride and Prejudice yeah. and other. Uh, Mansfield Park. And she lived there uh, with her dad, the Reverend George. Uh, Austin, right. who actually at one point in his life was a, uh, a trustee for an Antigua sugar plantation. Mm. So there's definitely links there, but this is back in the 18th century, right. you know, so we're talking 300 years ago. And uh, th her house, or the Austin house, has been turned into a museum. Mm. The, uh, uh, is it National the, Trust? Uh, no, it's not. No, it's just no. a private museum. Private mu museum. Uh, the museum's director now says. Uh, Lizzie Dumford is her name, that uh, uh, these links will be highlighted with future display boards to be installed at the property. She says it will be, this will be part of a steady and considered process of interrogation into Jane Austen's life so and how slavery-linked aspects can be better displayed. Jane Austen. Jane Austen. I mean, has anybody, anybody read? Has anybody actually read Pride and This Prejudice? is yeah. insane. Sorry, I like this Jane is Austen. insane. And if I, I go too. to, if I go to visit, I would never go and visit Jane Austen's uh, uh, house because I find her books to be, uh, you know, unreadably awful. Uh, I always did. Yeah, However, uh, a lot of people like them, and I'm sure they're. They're, they make a, a good movie In a well. literary sense, they're very good books. They're not for me, though, so I'm not interested in a boring old cow. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so... Yeah. Shit, can I say that? Yeah, there she goes. No, this working you can't say you that. Can't say she's that. great. Literary, she's a great writer. She's literary actually very funny. Never say you can't say that. She was very right? funny. Anyway, oh, yeah, hilarious. For the early 1800s. Yeah, 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 okay. It's a great story. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, I like it. The point is... the point is men a lot. The point is they want to festoon this house with warnings, you know, this dress... You know, has this, linked to this may upset War, you. slave trade, dad slave trade, yeah, yeah. so all over, all over. Why? Why? Don't be so pathetic. Do not treat us like children. Mm. And 300 years ago, a lot of people had links to the slave trade. It was a legal business. Uh, we can deal with Pretty it. What is it? We can deal what is with it. Do you think that they're trying to achieve by doing it? They are just <coughs> signalling their own virtue. Yeah. It has got nothing to do with people who are interested in Jane, Jane Austen. Nothing no. to do with ordinary people who want to come and visit that house. It is all to do with the trustees yeah. of the I mean, organisation saying, "Look at us, aren't we?" Great. I talk to my kids, my teenage kids, about this stuff all the time, and I ask them whether they care about history, mm. right? And they don't. They go, it's history. You know, we don't think suddenly somebody's good or bad because of what they were connected no, to. And it's, they uh, don't think a book is good or bad because of what the person who wrote it mm. did in their private no. life. They just want to see if the book's interesting. Yeah, and if it's interesting, they're interested. The, go the government should stop all this yeah. nonsense. The same thing with the National Trust festooning all those stately homes with signs to do with the slave industry. And now all the volunteers returning after the lockdown have got to go on an unconscious bias course. The government should stop it. They should stop this nonsense because it's a kind of revolution that's going on. And 99.999% of the ordinary people of this country think it's absolute mad nonsense. And you know what? It's not helping a single black person improve exactly their right, bloody Dawn. lives. Of course it's not. This, this nonsense has to stop. So the Jane Austen Museum and uh, Miss Dunford, uh, the idiot who runs it, uh, they are joint planks of the I don't, well, You I, might you know, as well I, say that everybody alive... Uh, currently, on this world, in the has early 1800s, a link, has a link everybody to had a link to which is not very yeah, nice. No, absolutely. Why so, so, so are you interrogating? Inter that's the word. That's the word as well. Can I just, this house can I just, uh, for its uh, historical links to slavery. Why? Yeah. Well, Why? I, I just wonder whether Miss, Miss Dunsford, that was her Dunford. name, has actually Lizzie read Dunford. Mansfield Park, where Jane Austen actually writes at length about how bad the slave trade is. Well, yeah, she was a, she, she was, was an actually at the forefront of arguing against the slave trade. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, let's hope Miss Dunsford Who cares actually anyway? includes. It was three hundred years ago. I know. It's, look, I don't care if she was the biggest fan of slavery ever known to man it doesn't matter but she you know that was 300 years ago we have different standards mm. today and if we can't understand that those people operated to a different set of standards uh, moral standards 300 years ago to what we operate today then we might yeah. as well kill but 
you know, and I thought, you know, I hope they'll, will, they have, will they have a section it's on how ridiculous. she she very rarely ate avocado on toast because, uh, they <laughs> couldn't bring the, it in from uh, the, the, the thing is the people get in the South America and, she, and she, after a while she refused to get onto that slave's gallery, galley and she wouldn't whip any of them yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean it's ridiculous the people get in their cotton knickers in a twist about this mainly See, don't that. actually seem to be quite as worked up about the modern day slavery no, no, we have no. with young That's kids right, who are digging out the in components Leicester. for their mobile in phones Leicester, by the way. and in Leicester you know. over here so it's it's a bit it's got to start. It's got to start. It anyway, has to stop. You get the point. But that's a good Anyways, one. Anyways, Mansfield Park, good book. Very good. Uh, um, well, book. people might want to read it after really look, nice. looking at this program, which is fast becoming, uh, you know, the new South Bank show, as yeah. I've said before. Now, my next, uh, uh, my next nomination is a couple of um, what can only be described as planks, um, who used to always be planks, <laughs> but now they've sort of turned into bigger planks. Jedward. World class. Now, you might remember oh, yeah. Jedward. Now, they emerged out of uh, the X Factor, right? They were the two Irish guys with the stupid hair that pointed straight up. I once yeah. actually interviewed them uh, when we were at Talk Sport years ago. Um, and it's the only t first and only time, actually, there was a whole horde of teenage girls outside the office because they all wanted to see Jedward, right? Not for but you. They, but they, no, just not for, for me. No, oh, just no. for Jedward. And, you know, they were quite nice, wholesome Irish lads, yeah. you know, quite funny, very poppy. You know, not particularly Uses. deep. Utterly well, uses. I mean, you wouldn't think that they were going to be the new Beatles or anything like that. Well, right? they couldn't sing. No, they well, yeah, but they were a sort of bit of a novelty act, a yeah, bit yeah, funny. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Recently, right, they've suddenly decided they want to change their image. They've started slagging off Simon Cowell. Swearing. Right, yeah. and saying that the X Factor swearing was a disgrace. Well, they were swearing yeah, they it. said, they said mm. that they wished, the one thing they wished they'd said on the X Factor was F off. Well, I'll tell you what, if it hadn't been for the X Factor and Simon Cowell, We'd these guys wouldn't have a career. Thanks, okay, Simon. But it goes from bad to worse because they've now decided that they're going to take a swing at all manner of things and on Saturday they actually put out at a time when um, the rest of the country was either dealing with watching or ignoring the royal family funeral for Prince Philip depending on which side of the, the you know the fence you're on but very few people would have actually taken to Twitter to slag it off they actually put a tweet out that said there seems to be nothing good on TV today along with an emoji that went like that with the face palm, right? Now, clearly, they were aiming that at the royal family. They started to get attacked for it. They deleted the tweet, OK, yeah. uh, because they realised that even they had gone a bit too far. However, what they didn't, what they didn't do um, was work out, actually, that everybody else had seen that tweet. Um, and so they then responded with, FYI, we don't support the effing monarchy. Yeah, well, I guess they're Irish. Uh, well, they are. Yeah. They are. But, I mean... Um, it doesn't matter, don't That's do not that. The day, do it. It's not the day to do it. It's not the day to do it. They, then, they then tweeted, the Irish language nearly lost because the monarchy wanted some extra land for holiday homes. Yeah, like they know. Uh, lick my sack of Irish potatoes. Yeah. So I mean, what? what is wrong with these people? Well, the thing yeah. is, the thing is that the, this is their new technique for trying to get themselves into the public eye because everyone has completely forgotten about them. Uh, in fact, they forgot about them very quickly after the X Factor, where, yes. where they didn't win because they were rubbish. Uh, yeah, and but, I now, mean, you, and mean, now you know Simon Cowell better than I no. do, and you probably do as well. Mm. I mean, Simon Cowell is many things, but he's given an awful lot of opportunity to an awful lot of people. Yes, yes. he takes his pound of flesh, yeah. but you don't yeah, go into that bit, situation Jeb without knowing. Jeb, Jeb would also... Uh, while we're on the <coughs> subject, are busy stabbing Simon Cowell in the back, saying the X Factor was terrible, they were, they exploited them. You're jo joking. You are a couple of Irish no-marks who turned up here and uh, suddenly got famous for about a year. Uh, mm. So don't don't bite the hand that feeds you. The X Factor is, is everything to you guys. But they're busy attacking... Uh, 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 Simon Cowell, they're attacking Piers Morgan, and now you're, they're attacking because the royal family. Because this is all they can it, do. Because it gets them into yeah. the spotlight. This yeah. is all they can do now, Kev. They have nothing yeah. else to offer. If, so that's you're all they can boys, do. You're you're finished. Be you're, you're a couple of twins, yeah. and you're finished in stereo. Well, I think if they ever want anybody to give them any publicity, um, around anything to do with the showbiz world, I think they're going to find no, that nobody got, is going to be. Also, they've got nothing to, to offer anyway. Well, they can't sing. They can't no. dance. They've got, they've got no talent. All whatsoever. they've turned out to be is a couple of rather nasty, bitter Twitter yeah, trolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bitter. That's, That's what it at is. Least they, at least they were nice kids. Right. Now yeah. they're just turning themselves into horrible little insulting, disrespectful And it's yeah. a shame. It's a shame. But mm. I'm very happy to nominate them yeah, as planks good, good, yeah. of yeah. the week. Yeah. Dawn, who's your third? Right, Mike, show, oh, we've done ice cream. Shall we have a beer now, boys? Let's have some beer. Let's have some beer. <laughs> right, OK, this is, and I've never heard of them, but protecting.co.uk, who now want pub goers... <laughs> Already to don't like the sound. Exactly. <laughs> pub goers <laughs> to sign disclaimers acknowledging the dangers of a drink every time they order <laughs> a pint in a pub. <laughs> 
Yes. What, like every time you have a drink? Or you really every time could have, yeah, I've got a sign. Visit. I'm aware that this may kill me. Well, each drink. It's like killing your granny. <laughs> yeah, you've got to get a sore wrist by the time we finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to do a lot of writing. Yeah. They, they, yeah. God almighty, yeah. you get writers, uh, writers I'm cramped with you. I'm a friend's run out. Yeah. run out. Right. Um, in any case, the spokesman, who's a chap called Mark Hall, oh, yeah. um, it's safe, this is a quote from him, it's safe to say that even though we all know the effects of drinking a lot of alcohol, boys, I hope oh, you're yeah. listening, mm -hmm, uh, many people seem to be ignoring the facts. Really? So maybe they need to be hit well, with a reminder life. every time <laughs> they order life. a drink. So that's going to slow everything down. Can you remember the old days when Even you had to so. get to the bar, right? And there was quite a lot of people there. And if you managed to get the attention of the barman or woman, um, you didn't let them go until you get all the drinks. Can you imagine, oh, I just have to sign for that, do I? Oh, I just have to give this to somebody else yeah. to sign. You never get a drink. No, 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 exactly. Maybe and that's uh, the idea. And, and this is having a go... This is one of it, Boris's ideas. Yeah. This is having Sounds a go like an it. industry. Um, pubs have already lost £8.2 billion pounds in sales since the pandemic started. Yeah. On its knees. So, I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's funny we're laughing at it, but they're serious. Now, are these people important? I mean, have they actually got any um, air? Mm -hmm. uh, I hope this, not. I hope this not. Feed, but this it's feeds just into like, this sort of coronaphobic society. Yes, Suddenly, exactly. Don't go out. Kill your granny. Yeah. Their own are you health. clean? Yeah, well, the, with are their own clean? health. Oh, if you have a drink, it might be bad for you. It's okay. We can deal with it. Yes. Don't care. You might die. Take, don't care. Attack. All right. Take yeah. responsibility for your own actions. Yeah, Protect your own me. health. If drink kills me, I'll live with it. Yeah, yeah. And you'll have a, you know, you know, if you give up drink, you won't live long. It just seemed like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at least I have a good time on the way to the coffin. Honestly. So, yes. any case, yeah. So, but you know, this is Kevin's absolutely right. We have allowed these bozos. And I'm going to use a different word for overprotective. These overprotective bozos who want to wear protective gear yeah. for everything into our lives in such a way that they're never going to they're never going to get out, are they? Yeah. Well, yeah, just, well, it's like one mask was enough. Now you have to wear two. Yeah, and it's then like, they, you have to have footprints on the pavement. Have you seen so it's like old Jakinda? What's the face down in New Zealand? What's the ban uh, smoking uh, if you're born I know, beyond 2004? 2004. Jakinda, I mean, sorry, she's the world's worst leader. Oh my God! God, she's got a lot of teeth. I know, well. thousands of teeth. Thousands. She yeah. Like out, you know, well, she should take up smoking. They'd fall out. Well, you should. <laughs> you know, you get I a, mean, we all know that. She could get like a full it's, packet of Marlboro in between yeah. each tooth. I mean, honestly, she's got so many teeth. Shocking. But it's, it is it shocking. is shocking. And, uh, and uh, the, you know, joking aside, we know there are alcohol okay issues, but the pub is so much more than about right. booze. It is about the social environment. Yeah. It's about the mental health aspects. It's about getting down there with your mates and having a laugh. It's about and we're drunk. completely forgot. <laughs> yeah, dulling the pain. Kevin, no. What about, um, um, completely what about, forgotten what, what how to do what that. About, what about the supermarket? What are they going to do there? You have to sign there as well. Well, yeah, I think obviously I think they're going to go the way of banning well, alcohol sales yeah, in no, supermarkets. Did you see that as a proposal to take all booze out of supermarkets? Yeah. Mm. Well, they were seriously post considering it in Wild. Mark something like, um, I, I think I might be right in saying this. I'm not certain. I only caught it with one eye this morning. Um, but Nicholas Sturgeon, I think, has said that they can open the pubs for you to go inside. But you can't some, drink. So, but you can't have a drink. So what's the point? So you can't have alcohol. You can have like this a is soft Scotland. drink. Hello. But this is the thing that you, you and I, Mike, at the pub show, we discussed with Toby Young. Remember, this kind of strange puritanical side mm. to their approach to the pub. So it's not just about not spreading the virus, pubs being a place where people mix and stand shoulder to shoulder and the virus spreads, because it's been proved that doesn't happen, didn't happen. The pubs weren't. No, no, absolutely. The, the big buildings that were responsible for the coronavirus spreading were hospitals, yes. not pubs. Uh, it's about, our, it's the government taking a kind of temperance society view of the fact that people when they drink alcohol become irresponsible and they, you know, they don't yes, behave properly. That's none of your guff. business. If I want to go to the pub and get drunk, last time I looked, that's not against the law. No, it's not. It's none of the government's as long as you behave yourself, don't and none of the government's business. Would. You know, but Very but most, worrying. But most people who drink understand that. The rise most of people who drink do not get themselves into trouble yeah, I know. and exactly. most people who drink go home when yeah. it's time to go home yeah the rise and rise of this puritanical streak in the government's approach to pubs is getting very worrying increasingly worrying stop telling us how we should behave in pubs stop telling us that there's something wrong with, with consuming alcohol and stop presuming to tell me whether or not I can get drunk at a pub what? because if I want to I will and bloody hell do we need a drink at the yeah. moment? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, especially I'll now. See, I'll tell you what, I'm going to start asking for alcohol to be served during Plank of the Week. I don't think it's going to get any more bloody rowdy. That would be dangerous. But, uh, Kevin, let's have your second one. Uh, I say that with a, this with kind of mixed emotions, really. It is uh, Morrissey. Uh, Morrissey, formerly of the Smiths, uh, once yes. uh, an extremely... Uh, skinny, tall, 
good looking guy with a bunch of flowers hanging out of his back. And slightly sort of rebellious yeah, as well. Yeah, and who wrote fantastic songs, was an amazing singer. He's a miserable uh, soul, the, though, isn't uh, well, he? Now yeah, he is. Well, heaven, well, knows he he's miserable. heaven knows he's miserable <laughs> yeah. now. See what you did now. Heaven oh, knows he's miserable now. And the reason he's Set miserable not, is because uh, uh, the Simpsons parodied him in a recent episode called, it was on Sunday actually, called Panic on the Streets of Springfield. Uh -huh. Obviously, a pastiche. See what of they their did there? Yes. Panic on the Streets of oh, London. So that's quite good to and be it had a, Well, it had a Simpsons. character in yeah, it. Yeah, me too. It had a character in it, a depressed middle-aged singer called Quillaby, who used to be in a band called The Snuffs. <laughs> uh, and he used to be handsome and thin and uh, popular. And in this episode of The Simpsons... <laughs> He was fat and his gut was hanging <laughs> over his trousers. <laughs> Hasn't he famously become like a, a, well, the a point, that's militant what, vegan? Well, no, well, no, 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 more than that. No, no, no. The reason I have got mixed emotions about this is that fair play to Morris. He, he, get, he dares to go against the, the woke sort of showbiz yeah. ilk and uh, has sort of mm, stood up did, for, some, it's, 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 for a few causes that even I find a bit yes. uh, Bit well, dodgy, I mean, does he not? Yeah, does he not, does right, he, yeah, you know. does he not lecture people on yeah. cruelty to animals? Well, he's a very, yeah, he's into that. In Meat is murder, one of his famous yeah, yeah. albums. Very much a vegan, but uh, he's uh, he's into some rather far right causes. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. he's gone a bit. Uh, so anyway, uh, so in that respect, I'm not saying I support his far right causes, but I, I uh, applaud his uh, bravery yeah. for coming out and saying it. So, but he got so touchy feely about the what the um, was he not insulted by? Yeah, well, no, no, no. I mean, it went on. It started. He, he went on to, he, in his Facebook account, Morris. He started, he put a statement out of it. Uh, he said, surprising what a turn for the worse the writing for The Simpsons TV show has taken in recent years. Uh, sadly, The Simpsons show started out creating great <laughs> insight into the modern cultural experience. Yeah, la, la, yeah all right. I've had enough yeah. already. But, but has since degenerated into trying to capitalise on cheap controversy and expounding on vicious rumours. What's a vicious rumour? Well, you're you've fat got, now. No, you've got you're a, you're fat, fat now. You've got a beer belly. Uh, yeah. and, and, but it goes on and on and on just because they spoofed him up. think he takes himself a bit seriously? Yeah, yeah just in other words, it, for, for taking himself so seriously and feel and and trying to kid himself that we haven't noticed that he used to be thin yeah. and he's pretty fat now. There's nothing, uh, worse than, you know, uh, there's nothing worse than old rockers, really, yeah, is there? Yeah, exactly. exactly. It happens to the relevant. best of us, doesn't it? We all get middle-aged, we all get paunchy, I accept well, it. Well, you don't get paunchy. I'm not, gonna, I'm not allowed to say what I would describe so you as it goes because apparently I was insulting the last time. Yeah. And it wasn't meant to be. He goes <laughs> in, well, I, I'm, well, I'm well, meant to be. What I said I'm back to you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. So Morrissey goes on. He goes on, uh, this is, this, his statement goes on, when a show stoops so low to use harshly hateful tactics like showing the Morrissey character with his belly hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> the Morrissey character? Yeah, Bloody of his shirt. That's, that's the other with, thing, with, right? With, 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 listen to, with his belly hanging out of his shirt, brackets, when he has never looked like that at any point in his <laughs> career, it makes you wonder who the real hurtful racist group is here. And then he goes into cite Hank Azaria. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, yeah, the whole Indian virtual guy, yeah. nonsense about playing uh, the... Uh, I mean, Indian get a life, man, people. for heaven's oh, sake. Oh, blimey. He says, he says uh, it's, it's um, uh, the Simpsons that are racist, not him. I mean, the trouble with somebody like Bob Morrissey is he, one, takes himself far too seriously, mm. needs to lighten up in a big way, but also anyone who refers to himself in the third person. Yeah, well, this is where you start, you start realising they are yeah, completely kind of lost. Statement. He's issued a statement on behalf of himself. Yeah. And it goes on and on and on. And that's the other thing. That the Simpsons, that's the other thing you know is ridiculous. Well, yeah, right? well, also the Simpsons played into that because uh, it's about um, uh, Lisa Simpson mm. really loving him when he was young right. and then lamenting the fact that he's turned it's into a fat old <laughs> racist. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> Which is rather clever, I imagine. I'd love to be in The Simpsons, wouldn't you? Of course. Oh, but what, a, what a tribute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I discovered in sort of the, the cartoon world with my, 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 my older kids, my, my 25, who's now 26-year-old son, um, who used to love Family Guy. Which oh, I didn't hilarious. know very much. I right. love family. Yeah, and, me too. And we were watching a movie one time with Willem Dafoe in it, mm. and he just started creasing up laughing because apparently they, they in Family them. Guy, there's Willem Dafoe sleeps under one of the beds, and they just keep, <laughs> and there's no reason for it. It's just really funny. Yeah. And they pull him out every now and again, and there he is, Willem Dafoe. Yeah, and I'm I'll going, tell you what, what about what are you family talking about? Girl. Family really Guy was great. Fancy family Girl's wife. That's, that's, that can be a tr tricky that's, one. That's it's quite fancy. The cartoon. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah. Okay, don't tell Henrietta, whatever you do. Um, I think I said that was your second. I think it's your third. It was your yeah, third, third, yeah. So I'm sorry, though. The I ability slightly to lost, count uh, is that exciting in yeah. here. Yeah, sorry, well, so it's, it's um, Right, my now. third nominee is Robert De Niro. Now, Robert De Niro used to be as close to a hero as I could have had, right? Did you Taxi mean to driver. rhyme that? Was that clever? Um, no. I didn't mean All right, to. All right, it's all right. No, that's no, fine. Thank no. you for noticing. Great actor. Uh, I've also been to his Michael restaurant. Robert De Niro. I've also been to his restaurant, the uh, Tribeca Grill. And in fact, I went there when it opened mm. to do a piece for the Sunday Times about it. And it was one of those where you go, uh, I'm calling from the Sunday Times. Um, I'd like a table, please, at the uh, Tribeca Grill. You can have one at six or ten, yeah. which, as Kevin will tell you, in American speak, that means you're nobody. <laughs> you can come in at six o'clock when there's nobody That's here, right. yeah. or you can come in at ten when everybody's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. And, and for a long time, in, in whenever I went back to New York, I would go down because it's really good food. Until I took one exception when I asked for some water. And they brought me, the first time ever I'd seen it, Fiji water in a Fiji bottle, which was square, in a kind of ice sculpture. <laughs> and, charged, water. and charged me $18. Ooh, wow. <laughs> and I'm going, and this was a long time ago. So I thought, this is a bit rich. Anyway, Robert De Niro appears to have gone a bit mad. He suffered from uh, Trump derangement syndrome uh, during Trump's time, before he was elected and during it. And if you remember, he banned Donald Trump from any of his restaurants, which are called Nobu, yeah. very expensive restaurants. Nobu. Used to be one Love in Canary Nobu. 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 Well. Yeah, yeah, I've been to the one in mm. Green Park as well. And Donald Trump, quite wisely, showing uh, wow, how, how kind of in touch he is with the common man, he said, that's OK. Most of my voters can't afford your $250 steak yeah. well, wagyu yeah. from Japan, you know. But so he's become this kind of strange figure. He started doing advertising for that bread company. Which bagels. I've, he's advertising he's, bagels. He advertised bread companies. He's yep. also doing, I think he's doing a car now car. as well. Now, apparently, the reason for this is that he hasn't got enough money because he's got a, he's got a predilection for marrying sort of models and, you know, what I would call quite high-maintenance women, right? His latest divorce, right, apparently, uh, when he got married to this woman who's called uh, Ms. Hightower. Grace Hightower. Uh, Grace Hightower. He's mm -hmm. 77 years old. Um, she's nowhere near that, right? Appearing in court on Friday last week, De Niro's lawyer said that he was having to support her at an unsustainable pace since they split <coughs> in 2018. Amongst the things that he can't apparently handle is her credit card bills, which monthly are about $215,000. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care whether you're sharing custody with children. But if your girlfriend, wife, ex-girlfriend, ex-wife is running up more than $200,000 on a credit card, don't you cut the credit card up she, and she, just say, sorry, yeah. you can't have any more credit cards. She, she claimed that was for essential maintenance while spending £100,000 on a diamond in one shopping spree. Yes. Obviously, you've got to support the kids. Of course, you've got to support yeah. the kids. I wonder how much, uh, how many McDonald's you can get for that. So he's going to have to pay her, apparently, $1 million a year so long as he continues to make $15 million per film. Yeah, well, because uh, what he, the th interesting thing about uh, Robert De Niro is for the first sort of probably 70% of his career, he always made great films. Mm. Ever since then, uh, the last 30% of his well, career, he started he's to been do making abject like rubbish. Like meet the like his grandpa His thing. belief that he's a really talented comic actor. I yeah, I mean, you. funnily enough, he could be. I mean, like Midnight Run, for example, is a great film. Mm -hmm. One of the, you know, where he's with... Um, uh, Charles Grodin. Charles yeah. Grodin. I mean, that is one of the great films. Yeah. And he, is, he can be very funny, but he's just overdone it. Yeah. But how about this for a sentence, right? While De Niro is estimated to be worth $500 million, his lawyers have said that he has struggled financially in recent years. I bet they did. I bet they did. This is why lawyers are not to be trusted. $500 million. That's not what he's made. That's what he's worth. Well, right? that, you can get through that easy. Now, if you can't, yeah. if you can't exist on a, a net worth of $500 million and you have to make awful films and you keep marrying women that rinse you for money, I'm afraid that makes you a bit of a plank, Robert. Amazingly, we're at the end of the nine nominations. I'm going to kick it off. I'm going to give... I go want, on, Mike, I want go. You, I want you to give me your three. Right. I'm going to tell you uh, exactly what to do with them. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing you're not going to pick the Super League, guys. Probably not. <laughs> right, OK, Super League. Yeah. <laughs> Very important. Very yeah. important story. It. Huge story. <laughs> no Huge chance. story. Yeah. No chance. Uh, <laughs> Relegated. <laughs> Super ben, League. Ben and Jerry's. Yep. Um, and beer, basically. Signing your life away every time you have a pint. It's the um, protecting.co.uk. Do you know what? I'm going to surprise you all because actually the other two are not that great. So the Super League Oi. goes in. Yay! The Super League, League. Well, hey. the Super League does Never go in. Just to, show you how, just to show you how magnanimous and fair I am, right? It's this not could win, have been though. my psychology to nominate the 
big one with some little rubbishy, rubbishy ones, ones, so you yeah. have to go for the... Oh, I perish the thought, I'll do that yeah. to you, Mike. Never, but, you I've know. never thought of that. <laughs> but there we are, so I'm going to go with that. Um, Kevin, would you like to choose my three? Yeah, sure. So my three are Keir Starmer, Jedward and Robert De Niro. All very, very uh, strong contenders, but uh, on this, the week of weeks, it has to be Sir Keir, Keir Starmer. Keir Starmer. Pub-loving, yeah. pub pub-loving Labour pub. leader. Yes, uh, mine's, a, mine's a large pint of um, beer that I'm not going to drink. <laughs> all right, very good. So, all right, Keir Starmer in the Super League. Um, Dawn, give yours to Kevin and he will pick one. No, you pick one of mine oh, already. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, You're, the other way around. You pick I'm one of I'm giving Kevin's. mine to Dawn, I think. Uh, uh, it, it's um, Liverpool, retiring Liverpool uh, police chief mm -hmm. Andy Cook, who mm -hmm. thinks the solution to violent crime is uh, to spend all your money, all your police budget, on fighting poverty, not crime. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, <laughs> it's, <No. and laughs> he's such an idiot. You're nicked, but <laughs> yeah. we'll let you go. And also says that rapists and murderers aren't, uh, uh, murderers aren't cool. inherently Just need bad a people. So Andy Cook, uh, get out of the police force while we're still safe, <laughs> please, before it's too late. Uh, so him, then of course the uh, Jane Austen Museum and the boss of that, uh, what was it, Lizzie Dunford, yeah, uh, Dunford. who uh, wants to put slavery warnings <laughs> all over the furniture. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And finally, the oversensitive rock star, aging fat Ooh, rock star, that was Morrissey. Funny, oh, yes. wasn't it? Morrissey Ooh. in the Simpsons. Yeah, Morrissey's good, isn't he? Morrissey, oh, that is funny. Brucey! There's something there. Brucey! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got something on my throat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's been doing that for all, as long as I've ever known him. Very funny. I don't know why I still laugh at it, but it is good. <laughs> right, okay, well, I'm going to shock both of you. I'm going to go for the Jane Austen Museum. Yeah, Jane Austen Museum, one. it's all right. Yeah, yeah we'll take okay, that. I'll yeah, take because it. it's, it's yeah, yeah, just wrong. I'll take it. Very good. Go so, read Mansfield Park. The Jane Austen Museum. Yeah. I have read and, it. And what's the name <laughs> done for? Keir Starmer um, and the Super League. It's Starmer all the way. This is, a, this is a career changing moment he had this week. Yes, I think that's true. Mm. I think that is true. Yeah. I mean, Never it's, ever escape. It's, hard. it's like Kinnock falling over yeah. on the beach. It's like yeah. Kinnock on the beach. Gordon it's like Brown, Gordon Brown. Brown. It's a bacon sandwich. Yeah. It's a Miller Van's bacon sandwich. Yeah. Gordon Brown. Yeah. It's David Cameron humming when he went back into yeah. Downing. Yeah, you know, that's what you remember them for. It's a, a career destroying moment. Yeah. yeah. I, that's what I, I do think. like the Super League, I know, but I'm going to be out there. Super League's yeah. a bit sort of obvious, isn't it? It's a bit obvious occasionally. Niche. As well, niche. It's, niche. it's niche. niche. You can have it as number two if you like. Okay. How's that? All right, go on. Is that, Compromise. Is that okay? It's got to be compromised. Come on. So it's got to be so Keir Starmer number Sakia. one. It's got to be uh, the Super League number two, the Jane Austen Museum number three. A bit of literary uh, literature, literature, a bit of Pubs. sport, a bit of politics. Yeah. I mean, you know, what more could you want? What's not to like? That's about as yeah. good as it gets, isn't it? Perfect. I think so. That's also a film. It Jack makes Nicholson sense and sensible. Jack Nicholson, there now you you're talking. See, Jack Nicholson. We're on fire today. <laughs> I nearly went on fire. It was so hot earlier. <laughs> this is, of course, Plank of the Week. Sir Keir Starmer is the Plank of the Week. I think he might be the Plank of the Month, the Plank of the Century. Um, next, the Plank. This time next month, he might not even be leader of the opposition. Yeah. We shall see. Uh, but we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.